Hi folks, welcome back. Quick tour of the garden, the veg patch. Um, so let's have a look. Um, over here in the corner, we've got some basil. It's been a really hot day, so it's wilted a little bit and we'll be watering it in the morning. Basil, the roots of basil do not like being wet overnight. So I will wait till the morning to water that. Um, over here, just on this little table, we've got some small plants going on. This is cucumber and these are, I can't remember what these are, what are they? Courgettes, yes, a couple of courgette plants. Over here we've got some <coughs> cos lettuce. You remember we showed you this tray earlier on, um, a few weeks back. It's coming on quite nicely. Uh, maybe it'll even work growing it here in these trays, which I'm looking forward to. And these are all lettuce. This is Webb's Wonder. Um, by the way, this is called Lobjoit's Green. This is a cos lettuce. This is Webb's Wonder. That's another type of iceberg type of lettuce. This is called Red Dazzle. I'm not quite sure what that is. Um, so we'll see how it goes. And then over here, we've got all of our little seedlings, all of our brassica seedlings going on, look. So we've got uh, purple sprouting broccoli, we've got cauliflower, Romanescu cauliflower, dwarf curly kale and calabrese here. Uh, and then actually we've got more lettuce, gone a bit mad on the old lettuce this year. Look, cos lettuce, we've got some little seedlings here that we're gonna bring on and uh, prick out and put into these sorts of trays here. And we've got some Sioux lettuce, S-I-O-U-X, um, Sioux lettuce, um, which is a, which is another sort of uh, crispy style of thing. Right, then we've got some, what have we got here? Uh, we've, we've got Brussels, look at these Brussels here. And we've got Nero di Toscana. This is uh, Cavallo Nero, which is really lovely greens. These things will be uh, plugged out into new beds that we made recently. Um, when they're about so tall So they've got a little while to go in the greenhouse and we're keeping them well protected um, And hopefully they'll grow up nicely. We probably won't use all of these but this is like an insurance policy to grow that many and uh, We'll probably end up using I don't know five or six of each of the best ones You know stuff like you know this here is looking better than for instance this one So we we'll probably use this one over this one. Okay over here. We've got a little sort of nursery going well It's all a nursery really but here we've got germination going on. We've got a few bits and pieces here. We've got aubergine, cayenne pepper. It is very late to be putting those in, but we've had some issues with them earlier and we're going for it anyway. And in here, I can't remember what we've got here. Uh, this is, um, oh yeah, that's asparagus. We're looking to create an asparagus, an asparagus bed. So we've planted from seed and we'll see how that goes. And we'll keep you informed with that. That's patchoy. Okay, keeping the lids on, keeping it all nice and moist. And over here, I can't remember what we have. Onions. We're doing some more onions because the onion bed is a bit thingy. Okay, over here, we've got, uh, over here, on the floor, we've got tomato plants. So they've been grown on um, rather like you see on the shelf over there we've just shown you. And these are in fabric pots now. Fabric pots are great because what happens is um, the roots air prune so they don't go round and round and round in a ball looking for more depth they just stop when they get to the sides what that means is you get a nice uniform root ball that doesn't keep growing and growing and growing and the energy goes back up into the plant which is a great idea because it means you get good flowering and good fruiting hopefully but we'll see I don't actually think tomatoes are very easy to grow um, but other people seem to grow them perfectly fine but we'll see how it goes down here on the floor We've got some summer squashes. They're like little round ball things. And uh, some insurance tomatoes over there. They're called Tigerella. Which, uh, oh yes, we missed the Tigerella. We've got four and six inch pots over there, which hopefully will grow up and give us some nice tomatoes as well. These tomatoes here, they're three different varieties. Um, and I'm not gonna go into that now, but hopefully, look, they're even flowering some of them at the moment. And over here in the corner, this is not a crop, this is just some sunflower stuff we're doing. Okay, so a quick spin around the rest of the plot. Over here we've got some potato growing in a sack here. Bit of an experiment really, it was a potato we had to eat, but it, it sort of went a bit mad and started producing sprouts, so we grew it. Over here we have got some red Brussels sprouts and some in front of it, we have got chard. some Swiss chard, which is just little seedlings we're trying to grow on and we'll eventually plug them out into a bed. 
Now behind the fairy photographer here, if he turns around, we can see this is a bed of onions. There's two types and we showed you these earlier on a few weeks ago. Uh, it does need a bit of weeding this bed, but um, in there is red and white onions and it's rather sparsely germinated. We, we planted straight into the bed. I'm not going to do that in the future. Uh, really, I think the way forward is seed trays and then modular trays grow up to about six inches tall and then plug out into a bed. That way you have some control over the space in the bed. But we are hopefully the seeds in there, the onion seeds in the greenhouse will grow up. We'll plug them in here and we'll have a full bed of onions in the fullness of time. Over here we've got carrots. You can see the carrots and the parsnips have grown up quite a lot since you saw them last. Um, these are Nant variety that's relatively early. We should get them in midsummer. And these are parsnips which we'll leave in the ground as long as we can, probably harvest them around just before Christmas time. And they should be lovely and big and sweet. And also there's a row of purple carrots in the middle that we just plugged in yesterday or the day before actually. And uh, they're looking okay. They'll take a few days to, to recover from being plugged out. And they'll come up and we'll have a few of those. Um, over to the, to the back end of the garden here. This is the garlic bed. So, like I said before, there's four different varieties of garlic. And I'm not sure whether it has rust or not. Um, but it does look to be doing very well to me. Um, rust is a thing where it, it sort of the leaves get discolored in a rusty kind of way um, and it prevents it proper photosynthesizing so I, I don't no. think it has rust it's just no. the color of the leaves yeah, and if you look at the stems they're nice and thick look at that stem down there so we should be getting some really big plump bulbs of garlic hopefully the ground's a little dry we've been watering a bit just to keep on top of it um, but I don't want to overwater them. They're looking really healthy. 95 plants here. It's a lot of garlic. Should last us for a whole year. And we might even be able to give some away to friends and family, possibly. We'll see how that goes. Over here, we've got the potatoes. And you can see how they've grown up. They've grown up a lot. And uh, once again, they're King Edwards and Maris Pipers. And they're doing really well. Um, they just started flowering the other day and I've pinched out the growing tips. In other words, I've pinched out all the flowering tips. That means that they put the energy back into the tubers in the ground, which is what we want. I'm not interested in potato plant flowers. Um, I don't think they're really any good to anybody as far as I know. Um, anyway, so that's how that is. Over here, if you can see through it now, this is new. You haven't seen this before. This is aluminium tubing, 19 mil aluminium tubing that actually um, we've had to get in order to drape this veggie mesh or mesh over to protect the crops, mostly against the cabbage white butterfly. So in here we have the cabbages. You can see they've grown up massively since you last saw them. This is a red cabbage and this spinach, this is a spinach. I don't even feel to tell you what the spinach is called because it's such a good spinach and I can't even get the seeds at the moment, but I'm going to tell you anyway. Mizuri. It's uh, Missouri F1, and it's beautiful spinach. I've never seen spinach as vociferous as this. Great big large leaves, and pick and come again, pick and come again. It just keeps going. We didn't realize we'd have so much. Um, but there it is. It's probably going to start bolting soon, I expect. It's one going to want to flower, especially after the solstice, which I think is midsummer, probably in a month's time. Who knows, we may have eaten it all by then. Over here we've got two new beds, which you've also seen previously. But we've also put the mesh over and the frames. And we're just getting ready. All those little seedlings you saw in the greenhouse, we're going to be transplanting them out into there and into where the spinach is once that's finished. Which it'll probably finish in the next two to four weeks, I suppose. Um, so those beds are empty, but I water them anyway to keep the soil moist. I don't want it to dry out completely, otherwise it's really hard to get moisture back into it. So we want them to be a nice state of hydration when we plant in there. Um, and yes, we have a mole or vole issue and uh, it's a constant bun fight with them and the snails and the slugs and everything else. And that's what all this protection is all about. And also the, the slug pellets that go into a sort of a straw dust around on the inside of the beds. Brilliant. 
So that's that, and that's that's the state of the garden at the moment. Fingers crossed everything goes well. So now we're going to scoot back into the kitchen. We're going to do one dish today, and that is we're going to cook some of the spinach that this fairy photographer picked earlier on. Fairy camera person, even. She picked them earlier on. And lovely, lovely beds of daisies there. Beautiful pink and white daisies. We've got some herbs over th these. These aren't herbs. Over there, we've got some herbs, rosemary, some uh, rosemary and thyme, which is flowering. I let that flower. Right, so back in here, we're going to do some spinach. So, this is the spinach. Have, have a look at the spinach here. Look, this is what we cropped earlier on. Beautiful spinach that, and basically we've we've washed it, spun it, um, and we've chopped the leaves in half. Okay, so that's all we need to do, and we're going to cook it very very simply. So if we have a quick spin around the ingredients, we've got some chopped we've got garlic here, fresh garlic. This is our own which we grew last season. It's nearly coming to an end now. Our store of garlic. Some red onion, this is not ours, chopped rather large and roughly. A couple of dried chilies for a bit of warmth, a veggie stock cube. This is a Nor veggie stock cube. Yes, they are available now, or at least we have found some um, online. And we bought a whole load of them. Fennel seed, always buy loads of fennel seed because it freshens things up. Uh, and some olive oil. So let's, let's crack on, let's get the pan warmed up. Okay, I'll, I'll put it on maximum to get it warmed up quickly. Get the olive oil ready. Let's get some olive oil in there. So, this pan is deep. Lots of olive oil. It's a deep pan because it's quite a lot of spinach. And, uh, it's, you know, it's not very convenient when the spinach falls out the top of the pan or the place on the floor on your feet and everything. So we use a deep pan. This is really a pasta boiling pan, I suppose. Oh, it's well used for that. Uh, bring the olive oil up to temperature which it does very quickly because it's got a low boiling point and we sprinkle some fennel seeds in there. Um, I don't do tablespoons, teaspoons, whatever, it's just a bit of fennel seed. Okay and you can smell it straight away as it hits that warming up olive oil, that, that aroma of fennel comes up lovely and fresh. Obviously if you don't like the flavour of anise then that would be an issue for you then just don't use them. Use something else. Um, so what we're going to do is just let them fit a bit, okay? We, I don't want to burn the olive oil, but I want the fennel seeds to just infuse some of their flavour into that oil and soften a bit. Otherwise you get a lot of hard, crunchy fennel seed in the background, which is not that pleasant unless you want to chew away on it after a curry or something, which also works. Okay, so that's bubbling away. And what we're going to do now... I mean, I'm going in a little, little more quickly than I would normally with the onions, but I'm going to go in with the onions because the fennel will keep frying. Okay. We're going to put the fan on here. It's going to make a little bit of noise. So it's probably best to get a big spoon here. Actually, I won't use that. We get a wooden spoon. Right, that's quite high up, I'll turn it down. Okay. Lots of steam. Great. Okay. That's just the water coming off the onions. Okay. So this is really simple. Put together really simply. Uh, you can keep it as simple as you like. You don't have to put fennel seed, you don't have to put onions in there. But I think it just helps to make something of a multi-layered meal, which is a little bit more interesting. Spinach cooks very, very quickly. You don't need to add any water to it at all. It'll reduce down quite significantly, especially the longer you cook it. But we won't cook this for very long. We'll just cook it past wilting, which is what we want. You get a lovely, unctuous spinach. It's beautiful. The taste is lovely. Um, it's a very sweet spinach, this, in actual fact. And we don't want to cook the onions out too much either. At this point, I'm going to use a pair of scissors, which I can't find at all. 
so they may be over here somewhere. Excuse me, man. Yes. What we're going to do is we're just going to use a pair of scissors and a dry chili and we're going to chop that chili in there. Now you don't have to use chili and I say this all the time but actually this is not producing like heat like you go oh geez that's hot. What it's doing is producing a little bit of flavor that lovely cayenne flavor and a little bit of warmth in the background and I just think that that really helps to to sort of build a three-dimensional dish. So that's how I would put it anyway. At this stage I'm going to add the garlic. I didn't want to add it at the start because there's a risk it would burn in a hot pan. The pan's calmed down a bit. In with the garlic. And also, well, we'll give it a quick stir. And also at this stage, in with the veggie stock cube. There it is. Okay. That's a vegetable, no stock cube. Brilliant stock cubes. Worth seeking them out. I'm going to turn the heat down a tad, it's on 10 out of 15, okay, right, now that vegetable stock cube is melting in the oil and the heat, okay, we are going to add a little bit of water today, because, but only after the spinach has melted a bit, and only to create a bit of stock really, a bit of jus for it to sit in, so there we are, straight in with the spinach on the top, don't forget the salt, a little bit of salt, not too much. You can see how much I put there. Sprinkle a really nice Malden sea salt. Malden sea salt is, wow, it's really the only salt worth using in my opinion. I'm not a big fan of rock salt. Um, it's just, yeah, I've talked about that before. Okay, so this is quite difficult to stir at this stage, but you need to just try and incorporate what's in the bottom of the pan with the spinach. Okay, and you'll see that. Spinach is twisting away. Right, now, what we're going to do at this stage is we're going to put a lid on there. Boom, one lid. Not a very exciting shot, but we need to, we need to get that heat built up in the pan, which is why we put the lid on. Okay. So we get the lid on, heat builds up in the pan, wilts the spinach. We're not far off this dish being ready. That's how quick it is, okay? Now, you probably won't find spinach like this out and about in the various shops. What you find a lot of the time is baby leaf spinach. That's fine, that's great for salads and that, but if you cook that this way, it'll wilt to almost nothing. So you'd have to buy about three packs of it for it to work. So this is a very large leaf, mature spinach, which at this time of year you can still just about manage. In fact, right up until about August. Uh, after August you're going to be picking baby leaves, really. Um, spinach doesn't really like to grow in really hot weather. It's more of a sort of a, a very late winter, early spring, autumn into early winter dish. Uh, veggie, vegetable, leaf even, to grow. And we're pushing the boundaries a bit. It's growing well on in to coming on to summer now. We didn't expect that, but we'll go with it as long as it's cropping. And it tastes lovely. Let's have another look at it now. All right, so that has stuck a little bit. Right, well, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do now. And I'm only gonna do it because it's stuck. This is an extra layer. This. You see that? Aspal, raw organic apple cider vinegar, okay? Put a bit of a glug of it in there, all right? And that is beautiful stuff. That's going to deglaze the bottom of this pan. You don't want to put too much, okay? But it'll, it'll clean up the bottom of the pan nicely. You don't have to use that, but it adds a lovely flavor. Right, that's it. I'm going to turn the heat off. All right. I've had enough of cooking and look, you see that? Look at the pan, look. It was sticking and now there's nothing there on the bottom. But what you've actually got is a lovely, it's a sort of a sweet and sour thing because the spinach is very sweet, okay? You've got the saltiness from the salt and the veggie stock cube. And you've got the sourness from that um, cider vinegar. Cider vinegar is beautiful. Um, white wine vinegar is 
very two-dimensional. Cider vinegar, oh wow, it really adds a lot of dimension to a dish and it's got that sweetness going on as well with the sourness. Could you use a glove of wine, white wine? Yes, you could also use white wine, you could use white wine vinegar too, but white wine would be great as well. But cider vinegar gives it that slight tartness. Be careful, don't use too much, uh, because it will take over the dish if you're not careful. And this is a raw organic apple cider vinegar, which, I don't know, I guess it's better for you. So that's it really. We're gonna have that with some, we're gonna have that with some mashed sweet potato that's got salt, freshly ground white pepper in it, and some butter beans all mixed up, and some butter of course. And, uh, oh, and some, some spelt, you know, in, in this pot is some whole grain spelt. Beautiful. Mm. Okay. So it's a pretty sort of rustic kind of meal, very healthy. And, uh, what can I say? Maybe you'll do the spinach and, uh, hopefully you'll enjoy it. Hopefully you watch the video. Thanks for watching and thanks for all your support so far. And, uh, hopefully, um, we'll come back at you with another video before long. Take care and mind how you go everybody. Bye for now.